If you need to control it or measure it, Stromquist & Company has a control solution for you. With over $2 million of inventory between our Georgia and Florida locations, an easy-to-use online ordering platform, same-day shipping, and a factory-trained team of controls experts to answer your questions, Stromquist & Company continues in its tradition of offering great service and great products. All right, so the lifeblood of a DDC system are its controllers. Um, the controller processes data that is input from the sensor, applies the logic of control, and causes an output action to be generated. The, um, these are the majority of the brands that we sell. This here is um, a Honeywell Spider. This is an Easy I.O. This is an XL15, and this one I kind of want to talk about for a second because this is Johnson Controls' new PCG line. Um, this is just a few months, few months out that, that this is this has been out, and after the class I can show you. But this is this is the PCG that we're talking about up there, right here, and this and this deal there. That one's neat. Um, we're going to talk about the difference in programmable and configurable, but just know that. This PCG is both programmable and configurable. So just keep that as a mental note in the back of your head, and I'll touch more on that in a minute. With controllers, you have inputs and outputs, or I.O. It's almost always what you hear it referred to as I.O. Um, so that's what it stands for, inputs, outputs. Um, there's various types. The more um, popular ones are analog, it's um, a voltage or current measurement from a variable. Think a number. If it's analog, it's going to be a set point, you know, a temperature set point in the room, um, you know, or a, a space temp. It's going to be maybe a humidity percentage, you know, something like that. So if it's analog, there's going to be a number associated with it. Digital, just think off and on. So true, false, off, on, start, stop. That's where your digital stuff is going to come in. That's typical. Sometimes you're going to see it out, outside of that, but 80, 85% of the time, that's what you're going to see. And then the neatest one is universal. So when in doubt, every controller is going to have, most controllers, I should say, there's probably some out there that I can't think of that, that don't, but you're going to have um, you know, your analog digital and then your universal for your, uh, for your controls. All right, this is a Honeywell Spider. Does anybody know what type of um, unit this Spider may go on? Got it, VAV or a damper. Um, the reason that these guys knew that is exactly right here. So this is essentially an actuator built into the actual spider controller. So that's going to go right up on your VAV box. Does anyone not know what a VAV box is? Variable air volume. Um, we can do a whole other class on VAV boxes, but in commercial buildings you see them in the, in the ceilings usually, and they're just dampers that are right in the room, and they're opening and closing based on what the room needs, heating or cooling. And so that would go and attach right to the side of the VAV box and receive its inputs, make a decision on what needs to happen, send its output to the damper shaft here, and it's going to open or close that VAV box. Okay? Um, this is a lot to digest here. This down here is kind of important. It's a silk bus. This is proprietary to Honeywell, um, but they have certain silk bus enabled sensors that they'll allow to be wired into the controller. Okay? So you couldn't the benefit of that is you're really limited to how much I.O. you have on a controller, where your silk bus is going to free up more I.O., but it's got to be something that will talk to the Honeywell Spider. If it's silk bus, it will. Um, Johnson Controls use something called an SA bus, sensor actuator bus, and so everybody makes their own different version of it, but essentially that's just giving you an opportunity to, to utilize that space instead of taking up your I.O. that you may need for something else. All right, 
Coming back to this real quick, um, the definition of DDC is going to also communicate. We're going to talk now about the communication portion of it. What's a JACE? All right, let's put Michael on the spot real quick because he always likes to pick on me and this is my chance to get him back. Do you know what JACE stands for? All right, I figured he would. J stands for Java Application Control Engine. I never in a million years ever knew that. I just knew that a JACE was a JACE and, and what it did. Um, this is a JACE here. This is the, um, the one on the left, the FX60. And the JACE is um, the mechanism that pr provides connectivity to systems within a building, okay? So, I'll draw this up for you here in a second, but basically um, your controllers are going to wire into this JACE and the JACE is what provides the connectivity to where you can view it and view your graphics and view your front end, okay? Yep, yep. All right, so how do we communicate? Via communication protocols. I am so jealous of you guys because this next slide is going to put you so far ahead of the curve and it took me forever to try and figure this part of this thing out and I think I've pretty much got it whipped um, of how to make it under, you know, understandable right off the bat. Um, these are a few of the many communication protocols. Um, you've seen these, I'm sure, out different, different places, different areas, but LawnWorks, BACnet, Modbus, Into. Lawn works you've referred to as lawn, you know, a lot of the time. Um, these are very simple if you think of them like a different language. I don't want you to get confused and think that lawn works was invented in Spain and back net in Italy. That's not what I'm going for here. If you think about lawn works, speaking Spanish, back net only knows Italian, etc. Um, that's the easiest way to, to try and figure it out. They're all talking a different language. And they can't. <laughs> yeah. And the um, the uh, I, sh I should also point out probably before this that um, there's open and proprietary protocols. So you're gonna have open protocols like Lawn, BackNet, and Modbus that are, can be used across all brands and segments. Whereas N2 is proprietary. There's a lot of proprietaries. That's one example of one. That's Johnson Controls. Um, proprietary. It only talks to Johnson stuff. Um, but basically, the JACE knows Spanish, Italian, German, and French, and it can translate what needs to be translated. So essentially, you can have a lawn um, thermostat or, or temperature controller on your wall, and it's going to go up and, and talk. Um, to a BACnet device because it's going to go through that JACE, which is the translator, and it's going to tell it in Italian what to do. So I need you to turn it on, amigo. No problema. In Italian, back to the other thing, and, and you're good to go. So it all, all works in unison with each other. Um, talk about wiring here for a second. <clears throat> um, If you didn't uh, get signed in, please make sure you do so. The sign-in sheet after the class is right there. And feel free to take a card if you need one. All right, so I'm going to draw it out and explain it to you a little bit better. Basically, there's a communication wiring called daisy chain. Has anybody heard of daisy chain? You want to come draw it on the board? No? <laughs> I'm just picking on you. The, um, basically, what you have with daisy chain is um, we're going to put the JACE up here. And then I think four controllers is enough. Um, 
What I couldn't figure out for the life of me I'm going to start passing this around. This is the, again, the FX60 Jace. If you'll notice on that Jace there, there's not very many places to plug anything in, is there? There's just a couple there. So I'm trying to think, you know, I've heard of a Jace and sometimes 40, 50 controllers. Now, how the heck do you accomplish that? How can you get all these controllers to talk to one Jace? It was, it was confusing as all get out because I'm assuming that what you need to do is wire from you know, here to here, here to here, and so on. And I'm like, there's just, there's no possible way that you can do that. What daisy chaining does, you're gonna come out of the Jace, out of the plus of the first controller, into the plus of the second one and out of that same thing so it's you're having one wire come out of the plus side here and plug into the controller and then the you know you're gonna have just like it's explained on the board basically but the wires are in fact coming out of the same hole so you have two ends of that wire going in there. So that, that's kind of a bad illustration. Let me try and split it. So it's working in serial? Say it again? It's going to work in serial? Correct. So you're going to have, it's going to come into this one and then out into this one and then out and just keep going like that on down the line. The only thing you need, if you're doing lawn, you'll do a terminator here and then at the end, but essentially you know, this is a separate wire from this, but they're going into the same terminal and then out into the next one and just continuing to go like that. So it's a pretty simple process, but I guess I'm slow or something. I couldn't figure that out for the life of me of how, how that would be possible. Um, the next thing here is um, just an example of what you may see 